everyone, I'm JC from Craft Life and I'm here today to teach you how to make a rain balloon water bottle cover. There are two different sizes that you can make. So the first one, it uses all the pegs and you don't see the water bottle as much, but it holds your water bottle and so does this one. So they both hold it, but you don't have to put a strap on if you don't want to. And for this one, it uses less pegs and less rubber bands and you can see your water bottle. So if you have made my rain balloon basket or my tangled bangle, then you should be able to make this because on my channel you may notice that I use this design a lot. So if you make one, then you can make the rest. And this, the basket would be the same as the water bottle if it didn't have a handle or a bottom. And the tangled bangle would be the same as my water bottle cover if I just kept going more. So the supplies you'll need to make this are one rain balloon, a rain balloon hook or a crochet hook, and rubber bands. Today I'm using light blue, dark blue, and white. So please get your supplies and we'll begin. I forgot to mention that you can use key rings when attaching your straps, but this is completely optional and I'm going to show you how to attach them. So to start, you're going to take out your middle row, then take out your big glue piece. Now this row is going to be pointing to the right and then we're going to turn this row around so that it points to the left. And if you want, you can move your blue pieces all the way to the end. So make sure they're on the end. So now we can begin. And in this design, I am going to be including the bottom X's as a row because I like how it looks at the bottom. And for my design, I'm going to be doing two rows of each color. I showed you two water bottle covers in the beginning of the video. And today I'm going to be making this one that uses less pegs and less rubber bands. And if you want to make this one that covers your water bottle more, then you're going to be using the whole entire loom. So if you're going to be making the one with less pegs, we're going to start on these two pegs and we're going to make an X, just like that. But if you want to make the one that goes all the way around, you're going to start on these two pegs. So now for the rest, we're going to make X's all the way down. and you're gonna push them down as you go. Then we're back at these two pegs, not these two, and we're gonna make an X. But remember, if you're gonna go all the way around your loom and make that water bottle cover, then you're gonna go on these two pegs. Now we're going to go all the way down again, and remember to push them down as you go. Now make sure they're all pushed down, and this row becomes our bottom row, and we need to lay another top row. So we're going to start on these two pegs again, and lay a rubber band normally, no Xing. And then you're going to go and keep going. And do not push them down this time. Now 
Now we have a bottom row and a top row, and we're gonna bring our bottom loops over the top. And each peg is gonna have two rubber bands, so you're just gonna grab those two rubber bands over the top and push it down. Bring those two rubber bands over the top and push it down and continue. Now you've just done two rows because remember, I'm counting the bottom X's as a row. And since my pattern is two rows for each color, I'm gonna to switch to my next color. So I'm gonna go and lay them on these two pegs. And then go all the way around and do not push this down because this will become your top row. Now we have a bottom row and a top row, and we're gonna bring our bottom loops over the top. And each peg is gonna have two rubber bands, and you're just gonna bring them over the top. Over the top. Over the top, and keep going. And remember to push them down. We just finished doing three rows, and I want to have 38 rows, so I'm going to do 35 more rows. But you can do more or less depending on what size you want to make yours. And what you're going to do is lay your rubber bands in a counterclockwise rotation, and then bring your bottom loops over the top in a clockwise rotation, and push them down as you go. So remember, I'm going to do mine for 35 more rows, and I'll be right back. I just finished my 35 more rows and now I have 38 rows in total and we're ready to end it. So, to end it you're going to start on this peg, you're going to grab that bottom loop, bring it to the side, and I know that was my bottom loop because it hooked the loop behind it. And I'm going to continue to check. So I'm going to grab this bottom loop over the top and onto the peg in front of it. And I know it's my bottom loop because it hooked the loops behind it. Keep checking as you go. So bring your bottom loop. Check to make sure. Keep going. So you're going to bring your bottom loop over the top on all of them.
And remember to check them as you go to make sure that you have grabbed your bottom loop. Now, on your last one, just stick it on to your last peg. Stick your hook through both of those loops. Grab a rubber band. Place it on your hook. Pull this up through. Place it back on. And then you're going to pull one loop through the other. To make a slip knot. Now, you're going to help your loops off. Now you can stretch it out so that your loops adjust at the top. And then you can also stretch it out like this. And we're ready to attach a strap. Now I'm ready to show you how to attach a strap. And this is completely optional. You can leave it as is or attach a strap, which I'm gonna show you how to do. But with this little loop hanging off the side, you want to leave it or attach a charm to it because if you tie it and cut it off, it may fall apart. So for your strap, you can do any design you want. I did a double single, which means I made a single chain, but used two of bands each time. And on the end, I put key rings. But you don't have to. Instead, you can tie them on if you want to. So you're going to start by taking three rows or however many you want. So I'm going to count one, two, three. Stick my finger in the third. And then with this, I want to stick my rain balloon hook in this, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You're going to stick this in like that. Remember, you don't have to do this. And then you're going to put it on. I have one on and now I'm ready to do my other side. So I'm gonna find what's equal to this side. So right around here. Count down three again. So one, two, three. Now with this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna open it up with my rain bloom hook. Okay, now I have it open. I'm going to stick my rain balloon hook in. Remember where I had it. And now I'm just going to stick this on. Once they're on, you're done. This is what it looks like when it's done and on. And summer's coming and I think this would be really great for summer. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you make some, I'd love to see them. My Instagram is craftlifeusa, so please tag me in a photo. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, pin it on Pinterest, and subscribe right here on YouTube. I hope you're living a craft life just like me. Thanks for watching. Bye!